Hello there ladies and gentlemen, gamer boys and girls, welcome back to the pod. Today is International Women's Day and I thought why not show my appreciation by taking a look at some great games from incredible female developers. So without further ado, let's see them games. Admittedly, visual novels form a niche genre, but I certainly enjoy them if the writing is up there. Now, as soon as I read the synopsis for Blake, I knew I had to give this one a go. Truth to be told, this title has been sitting on my Steam shelf since last autumn, I fully intended to do a video about it, sadly I had a lot on my plate, but now it's now or never, so let's dig in. When I first booted up the game, the first two things that grabbed my attention were the artwork and Sam Dudley's music. I couldn't help myself but just sit and listen to the melancholic jazz music mixed with heavy beats for a good 10 minutes before I even started playing. As for the visuals, while Blake is set sometime between the present and a cyberpunk utopia, with androids, a mech security prison reality show, cars without steering wheels and all that jazz, the world isn't presented in a dark manner, quite the contrary actually. The beautiful artwork, courtesy of Diego Lorente, and Adrian Stone, offers bright, vibrant colors, the characters are very well drawn, I just wish there was some more animation involved. The UI is very well done, it pleases the eyes, and the game offers a good amount of save slots that I have fully utilized. The thing about visual novels, however, is that they not only have to be visually pleasing, but the story has to be capable of grabbing the player's attention and keep him or her entertained throughout the playthrough. Well, Blake starts out on a rooftop, with our protagonist standing on the very edge of it, so how's that for attention grabbing? From this point on, the story kicks off quite fast. Without going into detail, as I don't want to spoil anything for you, let me just say this about the story. There will be a major elevation about the protagonist's family, invading birds, a kidnapping, a serial killer on the loose, and a lot of detective work, and most importantly, dog petting. The story unfolds in an enjoyable manner. The characters are well-rounded, and luckily they have more going on than meets the eye. As an example, take Chris, the silent giant, made purely of raw muscle. Despite the looks, he has an outstanding love for puppies. The narrative is tight, even despite the pacing issues, and I can't help but feel some storylines needed more time to play out in a satisfactory manner. It's not a major issue, but when it comes to the narrative and character development, I like to take my time. But at the end of the day, I still feel it, it was a great story and worthy of my time. I even went back to see where the different storylines go, and I had fun until the very end, during the second run as well. I'm sure the developer Orimis had thoughts about continuing this story, as you will come across bits and pieces of information being withheld intentionally. So, or if you see this, I'm, I'm down, I want to see Blake 2 happening, as this one was a win, with a V, if you catch my drift. While the gameplay mainly consists of the run of the mill pressing next and choosing your answers in a choices matter fashion, the game also offers minigames that add welcome variety to the good old formula. There will be some searching for clues, cocktail mixing, mathematical puzzles that reward you with petting a very good boy, and so on. When it comes to decision making, you will have your positive and negative answers, and often you are given a neutral or a very mean one. My advice is to be careful with the latter, otherwise you might just close the door in a story arc with a poorly chosen answer. So you might want to utilize the plentiful save slots the game has to offer. Overall, Blake is a very nice, albeit a bit short visual novel. It's a great story about mental issues, mysteries, loss and hope. It has a few hiccups, but nothing major really. It's a perfect game for a Saturday afternoon to kick back and enjoy a cyber noir story. If I recall correctly, this was Orimis's first game, and I have to say, way to go, way to go indeed. Up next from Plugin Digital is the puzzle game Letters, a written adventure. 
that tasks you with solving unique word puzzles to guide the life of the main character, and with that, obviously, the entire story itself. What landed it in this review, however, is the fact that the developer 5AM Games is the all-women studio of Alexandra, Martina and Selena. The story in Letters, a written adventure, revolves around Sarah, and we follow her life from childhood to her adult age. Sarah is from Switzerland and loves games, comics and drawing. She is fully customizable at the start of the game, which is a neat touch as you immediately feel closer to your protagonist and more immersed in the entire experience. Once you have created your perfect Sarah, you jump into the gameplay itself. And, well... Well, the story is told in a fantastic way, via letters and chat messages. We immediately meet Sarah's pen pal Katya from Russia. In the early letters, Sarah shares the ups and downs of her interactions with her family. In a way, you relieve the struggle of Sarah's upbringing through her words, and this pulls you into the story in almost no time at all, just like in Blake. I really enjoyed how this manner of storytelling quickly built a feeling of connection to Sarah and made me really want to make the right choices for my Sarah. These choices also result in different storylines or rather life courses. You get to know her as a 10 year old, then you see her as an adolescent and in the epilogue she is an adult. I immediately wanted to discover the other life courses after I finished the game for the first time. Fortunately, that is also very accessible because you play through the story in about 3 hours. Personally, I feel I wouldn't have minded a longer story, but even in this shorter format, it is an absolute pleasure. The gameplay of this game is very unique. You control Sarah on top of the literal words that tell the story. You can also jump from line to line using the breaks. This is a very simplistic form of platforming, but it adds a nice touch to the game. Usually there's a drawing or some kind of art in the way that prevents us from progressing. The way we interact with these by throwing words at them. For example, a bird without wings can only leave if you throw the word wing at it. However, you can't just use any word from the text, only the words marked in blue and certain hidden words are usable. To find the letter, you can kick around other words. If you find the one, part of the word will disappear and the usable part will be highlighted in blue. For example, friendship becomes ship. Fortunately, there is also a hint system to find hidden words. And while I wish I could claim that I have never used it, as the story went forward, I certainly needed it from time to time. Depending on which word you throw at a drawing, the story changes. You can recognize the more impactful choices by the words that are marked in orange. I can't stress how unique and enjoyable I found this gameplay. Starting out it felt very special to me when a drawing changed just because I had thrown a word at it. And in fact this feeling never changed as I continued to play. I wish my drawings had done the same when I was a child. Oh well. Not only you are forced to think carefully about which words could contain other hidden words, in addition, the many references to games and comics are great to discover. The writing style is light-hearted and funny, but sometimes comes with a more serious undertone, especially when it comes to issues such as divorce, abuse and mental health problems. Letters has a very nice hand-drawn style. In Sarah's life stage when she was a child, the backgrounds look very cheerful, you can see how she made doodles on the paper. As she gets older, you also see the backgrounds become more mature. For example, a computer is added and the use of words changes, which is an excellent idea. As a grown-up developer, it must have been challenging to write in a child's manner, so heads off to the devs. In addition to the changing visual part, the music also changes as Sarah ages. Depending on your choices, she will like certain styles of music, which you will also get to listen to. This makes the experience even better. All in all, the audiovisual elements complement the story very well. Letters A Written Adventure is a unique puzzle game with a gripping story. Sadly not very long, but with a good reason to play through over and over again to discover the different life courses and a solid core gameplay loop that keeps being interesting throughout. I can but suggest this one for anyone who's in for an emotional ride.
And we have arrived to the last game. Blue June, a psychological horror developed by Tiny Dodo. A one-girl video game development team from Toronto, Canada. Bibi, the woman behind the game, does everything from programming to art, game asset, animation, sound and design. Blue June is a low-poly 2.5D story-driven psychological horror adventure game with elements of exploration, puzzle solving, stealth and horror. We play as June, a student of the prestigious Rose Hill Academy, and we set out to uncover the source of her recurring nightmares. Currently, this game is still in the works, and this mini-review is based on the public demo that can download it from Steam. Core gameplay revolves around looking for clues and interacting with our surroundings, all the while being tormented by twisted, dark, mannequin-like creatures. Even the 30-40 minutes I spent with June were enough to hook me. The story seems really strong, and with it, the atmosphere as well. It looms all around you, you can feel the dark and heavy presence all around. The puzzles are clever and well thought out, and the scenery is great. Despite it being low poly, the game definitely make you uncomfortable and scare the bejesus out of you. We will mostly shit our pantaloons during June's nightmare scenes, as these are based on her day-to-day -day life that slowly bends and twists around itself. The colors, sounds and places are no longer the same, and the game will slowly freak you out, with its slow pace and symbolism. I can but applaud Bibi's effort so far. Blue June is definitely a game I can suggest to keep an eye on, and you should play the demo. So that was our way to celebrate International Women's Day. I wish all the best to the developers who were represented in here. Ori Mies, Alexandra Yakusheva, Martina Holtz, Selina Kapo, and last but not least, Bibi. Bibi, I'm sorry, I tried to look up your real name, but I just couldn't find it. So, happy Women's Day to all of you and all the women out there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As usual, you can find all the context to the devs and for the games below down in the description. Please like this video to please the algorithm, and while you're there, please hit that subscribe button, it's free and you can change your mind anytime. With all that being said, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Escape pod, out.